Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So it's been quite a while since I bought a new film camera. I just haven't really had a need for one. Been very happy with the Pentax 6-7, but I'm starting a new project here in a few weeks, which called for something a little bit different. And I decided to go with the camera that I've had my eye on for a while now. And that is the Rolleiflex 3.5F. So as mentioned for this upcoming project, wanted something just like a little more compact, lighter, and also a little like simpler. I like that this is just all in one. I love the Pentax 6.7, but uh, the weight obviously can be an issue at times. And then sometimes I'm, you know, trying to decide which lenses do I want to bring or I end up bringing away too much stuff. So this seemed like a really good fit uh, for what I need to do. And it was a good opportunity to pick up this camera that I've really wanted to try for a while, but could never really justify in the past uh, without like a specific purpose. So the plan today is to get out, shoot a couple of rolls of black and white, make sure this works, get a feel for the images, the negatives, see how they look, and just talk about my first impressions after using this. So when it comes to gear, I've always just picked the equipment that suits me best for the work I'm doing at a specific point. Name has rarely factored into the equation. But I'll be honest, every now and then there are these kind of iconic cameras that have a history behind them that draw you in. And the Rolleiflex has always been one of those for me. So I was pretty excited to finally try this camera that has such a storied history and see what it's all about. When it comes to Rolleiflexes, there's a lot of different models to choose from. I knew that I wanted one of the later F versions and I decided to go for the 3.5 rather than the 2.8, mostly due to cost. The 3.5 is quite a bit more affordable. And also a lot of the work that I'm doing for this project is going to be landscape. So I'm totally fine with a lens that's just a little bit slower. And you know, when it comes to TLRs, there's obviously a lot of other more affordable and still very capable options out there. I used to own a Yashica Mat 124G, which I really liked. But with the Rolly, there is a certain allure that drew me in, and I'm sure does the same for others. The famous Zeiss Planar lens, the claimed reliability, the precision of this. So definitely have high hopes for this. Still a little rusty, I will say, getting used to the waist level finder and everything being backwards, but uh, yeah, really enjoying square for some reason. Never know what you're gonna get down here. Apparently it was gonna rain at uh, 3 p.m., not 10, a.m. Okay, so hiding it out in the car here for this rain to pass, which I'm optimistic it will. I hope it does because I really want to get out and shoot some more. It's been nice to shoot square format again with a TLR, a little bit of getting used to, but I forgot how much I enjoy composing with this format. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But so far, the Rolly, it's kind of been everything I expected. Really nice to use, you know, feels refined, winds nice, but there are a couple standout things which I didn't expect. Uh, the first is that the focusing knob and the shutter speed dial seem a little stiff. So there is one point when you're focusing where it kind of binds up a little bit. And then the shutter speed, there's a couple speeds that are tough to select. So I'm kind of chalking this up right now to who knows when this was last used. Maybe it just needs you know a little bit of use to work things in a bit and loosen them up. So we'll see how that goes. And then the focusing screen, so the ground glass is a split prism for focusing. And for some reason, the like a large portion of the center of the screen beyond that things look out of focus even when they are in focus, like the edges look fine. So not sure what's going on there either, but uh, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna wait it out here in the car and it looks like this might be breaking. I hope it does, cause uh, I'd love to run a few more rolls through this. So I'm gonna have my coffee and be patient. 
Back to the video in a second, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. One of the things on my to-do list this year is to give my website a bit of a refresh and an update, and Squarespace is a really great tool to do just that. They have a wide range of nice, clean, professional looking templates to choose from, and then I just love the simplicity of it all. So, for example, currently putting together a gallery of some of my recent work from Wales, and just being able to click on images and drag to rearrange and reorder is really great when you're building out sequences. You can also add things like an online shop if you want to sell prints, zines, or photo books, and things like that. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, one roll down. Shooting Ilford Delta 100 today. Got a few different films, but I'm uh, gonna stick with this first. Hey there. Sun is back out for now. Let's see what we find. So even after just a couple hours of shooting, this camera really did start to hook me. It felt really great in the hand, you know, solid, but lightweight, finder was nice and bright, and other than that focus and shutter speed issue, everything felt nice and precise. When it comes to the optics on this camera, really excited to see how it performed. Obviously, this Zeiss Planar lens is very well regarded and it definitely didn't disappoint. You know, nice and sharp, really detailed negatives. And I'm excited to shoot some more of this, especially some color, which is what this new project will be. And even just shooting a few images wide open, maybe some portraits to see how the lens renders those situations. So overall, just very impressed. And it's been a long time since I've walked away from a first shoot with the new camera and been that hooked. I think that's it for today. It's uh, windy and raining and pretty miserable. Okay, so a good morning, you know, shot a couple rolls. I still have a, a, a roll of T-Max 400 that I just loaded, so I may go out uh, and shoot this tomorrow. If I do, those images will be in this video. Uh, but just a nice, really, really nice change. I was out with the Pentax 6.7 a couple days ago with the 55 to 100 mounted. I love that camera, it's my go-to, but it is, an absolute tank and at times is not the most enjoyable, especially handheld. So this was just like a refreshing change. No lens choices, nice and light, nice and compact and just a, a fun, fun way to shoot. I will say though, I think I may have found the reason why the focusing and the shutter is stiff and it might actually be a pretty big deal and something that might make me actually send this camera back to where I bought it from. So I'll explain in detail back in the office and uh, yeah, gotta do some research to see if I can get this fixed. Okay, so good day out shooting, and like I said, I'm pretty sure I found the issue that's causing me problems here. And now that I see this, I actually can't unsee it. I don't know how I missed this at the start. I'm assuming, you know, just being excited to go shoot with this, and overall it's in a very clean condition. Uh, but obviously glad I went out and did this, and it's a important reminder as well about getting out and testing gear before you use it for any serious work. So glad I did this. But basically, uh, the issue is up here on the front of the camera, hopefully you can see this on the front lens board or panel, there's a bit of a dent. So I don't know if this camera was like bumped or dropped, something like that at one point. But obviously, that's causing some sort of like binding or pressure when you're racking the focus and this board's extending. And then I'm assuming it's messing with like the linkage or the gearing for the shutter speed selection as well. And I've actually noticed now that you can't select shutter speeds slower than I think a quarter of a second until you actually extend this board out quite far. So something weird's going on there, but uh, yeah, bit of a bummer, you know, and obviously a pretty big issue. So gonna have to look into getting this fixed, uh, but 
I think regardless, you know, even if I have to send this camera back, it's safe to say that I'm going to be looking for another one of these right away. Um, it's been a really long time since I've been this excited about a new camera. Like I said at the start, you know, I haven't really bought a new film camera in quite a long time, but even from ones that I've used in the past, you know, I think every now and then we all find that one camera where we feel like there's some sort of like special connection with it. And it's not that it's necessarily like worlds better than others when it comes to capabilities, but there's just something about it. And I feel like this Rolleiflex is one of those for me, just a camera that I, I think I'd constantly be excited to go out and shoot with. And I definitely see the appeal with these, you know, just from like the history behind the name, you know, the lens on this, the refinement, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a really, really nice camera. So cool to finally be able to shoot with one of these and yeah, going to have to figure out from here what the best step forward is because I definitely want to start this project pretty soon, hopefully within a few weeks. So uh, repair or replacement, we'll see. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. If you own a Rolly Flex, I would love to hear from you below, especially if you own a 2.8. You know, like I said, I think 3.5 is the right version for me, especially considering the cost. But uh, I'll be honest, now that I've tried this, I'm like, oh, 2.8 might be uh, fun to experiment with next. But Or even if you own another TLR, something you enjoy working with, I'd love to hear about that as well. But um, anyways, as always, just want to say thank you for watching and I will see you next week.